All right, I'm sure you heard already this morning that there's been an attack at the airport in Kabul. Um, we are being briefed right now by the Pentagon, uh, the commander of U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, General uh, Ken McKenzie. There were American casualties, so um, let's listen to the briefing. Um, it's a hard day today. As you know, two suicide bombers assessed to have been ISIS fighters detonated in the vicinity of the Abbey Gate at Hamad Karzai International Airport and in the vicinity of the Barron Hotel, which is immediately adjacent. The attack on the Abbey Gate was followed by a number of ISIS gunmen who opened fire on civilians and military forces. At this time, we know that 12 U.S. service members have been killed in the attack and 15 more service members have been injured. Damn. A number of Afghan civilians were also killed and injured in the attack. We are treating some of them aboard HKIA. Many other Afghan civilians have been taken out to hospitals in town. We're still working to calculate the total losses. We just don't know it, uh, what that is right now. Their loss weighs heavily on us all, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through my prepared remarks. We continue to focus on the protection of our forces and the evacuees as the evacuation continues. Let me be clear, while we're saddened by the loss of life, both U.S. and Afghan, we're continuing to execute the mission. Our mission is to evacuate U.S. citizens, third country nationals, special immigrant visa holders, U.S. embassy staff, and Afghans at risk. Despite this attack, we are continuing the mission, the evacuation at best speed, and as of today, we have approximately 5,000 evacuees on the ramp at HKIA awaiting airlift. Since August the 14th, we've evacuated more than 104,000 civilians wow. from, the, from HKIA, over 66,000 by the United States, and over 37,000 by our allies and partners. And that includes bringing out about 5,000 Americans. As the Secretary of State said yesterday, we believe that there are about 1,000, probably a little more than 1,000 American citizens left in Afghanistan at this point. We're doing everything we can in concert with our Department of State partners to reach out to them and to help them leave if they want to leave. And remember, not everybody wants to leave. Right. Yesterday, we brought in over 500 American citizens. It would be difficult to overestimate the number of unusual challenges and competing demands that our forces on the ground have faced. The threat to our forces, particularly from ISIS-K, is very real, as we have seen today. I would also like to express the sense of profound pride I have in the creative, determined, and professional way that, that our forces have overcome those challenges and to deliver the, the results that we talked about in my opening portion of the remarks, the number of people that we've been able to extract from Afghanistan. It would also be remiss of me not to mention the tremendous contributions of our many coalition partners, and they stood with us on the ground at HKIA, and also the interagency and international partners who supported the evacuation. The many soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who supported this operation downrange across the Central Command, the European Command, and the Northern Command areas of responsibility. Moreover, this evacuation could simply not have been done without the amazing flexibility of U.S. Transportation Command and the airlift provided by the United States Air Force. Yay. No other military in the world has anything like it. I'd also like to thank the host nations that have generously provided access to their facilities for the processing, the care, and the feeding of our evacuees. I also need to acknowledge the temporary suffering that some of our evacuees have had to endure. Please know that we continue to execute our number one mission, which is to get as many American citizens and other evacuees as possible out of Afghanistan. We also continue to expand the capacity at our intermediate facilities to ensure safe, sanitary, and humane conditions for our evacuees while continuing to look for ultimate ways to expedite their processing and ultimate transfer to the United States or other destinations. I'd like to close out my remarks today by just taking a moment to describe the heroism that our Marines, soldiers, and sailors are exhibiting as they screen the people who are coming onto the airfield. This is close-up work. The breath of the person you are searching is upon you. While we have overwatch in place, we still have to touch the clothes of the person that's coming in. I think you all can appreciate the courage and the dedication that is necessary to do this job and to do it time after time. Please remember that we have screened over 104,000 people. Finally, I'd like to offer my profound condolences to the families of our servicemen and women and Afghan civilians who lost their lives today. We have put uh, more than 5,000 U.S. service members at risk to save as many civilians as we can. It's a noble mission, and today, 
we have seen firsthand how dangerous that mission is. ISIS will not deter us from accomplishing the mission. I can assure you of that. All Americans can and should be proud of the men and women of the armed forces who are facing these dangers head on with their international partners and all our other friends that are with us. And we appreciate your thoughts and prayers for all our service members who are carrying on this mission today. John, I'm now ready to take questions. Thank you, General. We'll start with the Lita. Thank you, General McKenzie, uh, Lita Baldor with AP. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do this. Um, can you give us your assessment of the ISIS threat going forward? What are you seeing on the ground now? Does this cut the evacuation short, do you believe? Um, and are people able to get onto uh, the airport now? And then finally, the president has warned that any attacks against the U.S. would be answered. Will this attack be answered mil militarily by the U.S.? So um, a number of questions there. Let me try to take them in order. So first of all, the, the threat from ISIS is extremely real. We've been talking about this for several days. We saw it actually manifest itself here in the last few hours with, a, with an actual attack. We believe it is their desire to continue those attacks, and we expect those attacks to continue. And we're doing everything we can to be prepared for those attacks. That includes reaching out to the Taliban, who are actually providing the outer security cordon around the airfield to make sure they know what we expect them to do to protect us. And we will continue to coordinate with them as, as they go forward. We are continuing to bring people onto the airfield. We just brought a number of buses of, uh, uh, aboard the airfield over the last couple of three hours. So we continue to process. We'll continue to flow wow. people out. Wow. The plan is designed to operate while under stress and under attack. And we will continue to do that. We will coordinate very carefully to make sure that it's safe for American citizens to come to the airfield. If it's not, we'll tell them to hold, and then we'll, you know, we'll work other ways to try to get them to the airfield. But I think our mission remains. We're still committed uh, to flowing people out up until we terminate operations at some point, you know, towards the end of the month. And but I think we have the ability uh, actually to do all of those things as we go forward. Uh, let me just come back one moment, uh, and, and you talked about. Uh, going after ISIS. Yes, if we can find who's associated with this, we will go after them. We've been clear all along that we're going to retain the right to operate against ISIS in Afghanistan. And we are working very hard right now to determine attribution, to determine who is associated with this cowardly attack, and we're prepared to take action against them. 24-7, we are looking for them. Okay, so those are the main questions. Can we still evacuate uh, Americans? Yes. How many Americans are still in Afghanistan? He says approximately 1,000. Last night, 500 Americans were evacuated. 104,000 people have been processed by 5,000 American soldiers, airmen, mar well, not airmen, <laughs> that we're, we're up in the air. <coughs> but uh, the Marines have processed um, 104,000 people. Um, we lost 12 Marines today, 15 wounded in an attack by a terrorist group that were in prison called ISIS-K, who were let out of prison. How do we know that? We know that because the Taliban, who has an enormous amount on the line here today with regard to getting their assets unfrozen by Western governments, opening up their banks, making money flow into Afghanistan. The Taliban said that the threat was coming from ISIS-K and that they had been in prison prior to the request by the United States to empty the prison of ISIS fighters. The Taliban are now saying that was one of their biggest mistakes to do that. And I think what you saw today happen is the beginning of the Afghan civil war between the Taliban and ISIS. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.